Welcome to When Culture Calls, where three worlds have collided. We're bringing girl talk to the main stage while flipping culture on its head with our passionate point of view. You're dialed into deep connections and necessary conversations. Whenever I need someone to call on, I know I got my girls. Welcome back to another episode of When Culture Calls. I'm Khalifa. I'm Indesha. And I'm Amara. And we ladies have not uh, reconvened for a few weeks. So, Indesha, how are you doing? What's been, what's new? Um, I'm pretty good. Um, the last, since the last time we've met, I feel like, you know, there's been a lot going on. And the, a lot going on hasn't stopped because I'm officially moving back from Texas back to the East Coast next weekend. So I'm just like getting all my stuff in order to like do that move, which I'm excited about. So another cross-country drive on the way back flying there and driving back so that should be interesting okay. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta keep us posted uh when we shoot and then let the viewers know how that went but definitely safe okay, travel. Cool. i wish you safe travel you. for sure amara how has your weeks been since we last uh recorded my weeks have been a roller coaster of emotions um i've been reconciling with family members and you know, Mother's Day not too long ago passed, my birthday passed, and just been spending a lot of time with family that I've been grateful for. That's good. And that's that's a blessing. So good for you and good for you both for making new moves and new decisions. So um, for me, I've just been busy with, you know, work, school, family. Um, I'm so happy the sun is out because that's my happy place. But, um, you know, the regular life. Um, the school has been, I have like 11 classes left, so I'm just trying to, you're almost there. there. You got I'm this. almost there. And I'm on, I'm, I'm on, um, my school's budget. So, I mean, my job's budget. So it's taking a little longer than it would if I like took out loans and stuff, but I'm grateful nonetheless. Um, we're going to get into the topic today and the topic is growing together in love the delicate balance of self-discovery within the context of a loving relationship, AKA, how do I do me while we do each other? No, I'm sorry, let's do it again. <laughs> no, that was good actually. Mm -hmm. I know, but PG version, <laughs> jokes aside, like how do you still be Amara and Daisha, I be me, while in our you know, relationship? And I think that, um, I think anyone, can relate to this no matter the age whether you 17 love birds or whether you 52 and you're trying to find something new you're you haven't you don't have you need a breakthrough um i think that everyone can relate to this so um and i know that like relationships they're beautiful but they are challenging so have you guys had any first-hand experiences of like a tug of war of wanting to, uh, or feeling like you need to, you want to grow and you have, and but your your growth is stunted. Have any of you ladies felt that firsthand? I would say that I I feel like I've experienced that um, in a sense of wanting to grow as far as my character or making changes that I thought I was growing in, and um, maybe someone who I was with didn't necessarily see it or chose not to see it. And that is a very suffocating feeling because you don't, you're not, you're not necessarily looking for validation from your partner, but it's your partner and we we're all human. So we really do want a, a somewhat, somewhat of validation, especially from the person that, you know, you're going to be with. So, it wasn't, I wasn't looking for validation, but when you know that there might be like a issue within your relationship and you are trying to work on that and you think that you're working on it and your partner doesn't see it or chooses not to see it. Yeah, that's suffocating. And when you, okay, when you say like working on it, do you mean like you were working on something for you both to grow or is this something like a, you had a career um you were chasing like a career or you were chasing like um something within yourself was it like something that you wanted between both or yourself something within myself that would benefit our relationship more like personality traits okay so you were in that you were growing in your like your character and your yes. 
okay, like the emotional well-being, things like that. Yes. I think that's, you know, originally I didn't even think like that. I was thinking like specifically like skill-based things like, oh, I want to be a runner. Oh, I want to be an entrepreneur. But I think that's really good that you, you know, started off with that because growth happens in many areas. So it's not just, you know, the money area. And Daisha, um, have you had any firsthand experience of trying to balance your personal growth while you're in a relationship? And what was that like if if you had? I'm experiencing what Amaro was referring to in my current relationship. In my previous relationship, I felt like I was experiencing not the character personality development, like, you know, being aware of my flaws in that way. But I feel like in my past relationship, it was like, I knew I wanted to do something creatively. And I kind of felt like my goals were like, I don't know why I felt this way, but I felt like I couldn't comfortably chase that while being in this specific relationship. I feel like he would look at it like, why would you want to do that? Like, why would you want to be on YouTube? Like at 29, mind you now I'm 34, which is like crazy. <laughs> but I felt, and I think that it was my own thing that I was projecting on him because of like what he was doing and like the things that he accomplished. I felt like, okay, well, I want to do something creative. And I think my previous relationships before him, they were both creative people. So I feel like I got to explore that. And this person was not that, like literally not creative. So it was just like, I felt stunted, but I felt stunted now that I reflect back, not because of how the person made me feel, but how I thought the person would view me if I was chasing something that I actually wanted to do. I'm curious, did you ever have that conversation? No, because <laughs> I didn't because I feel like when you're really like sensitive about something and I also feel like it could have been like self-sabotage. I feel like sometimes when you want to achieve something and maybe you feel like you can't or that people wouldn't support you, you know, like I didn't think that my person would support me. It's just like, why would other people support me? And I feel like I went to this whole like thing in my head, like, well, if I don't believe this person will support me, why would others? And like, I just kind of went down downward spiral so I never actually had the conversation because I feel like that conversation I don't know what I would have expected as a response and I felt like the unknown was safer than speaking to him and possibly hearing something that I didn't want to hear wow Jeez. Can I, I want to pry a little bit did y'all yeah. wake up because of that Good. Yes, I want to Good. 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 Pry, I was like damn this is good we gotta keep it going <laughs> did, did y'all break up because of that not because we broke up for a lot of different reasons. One of them was because I feel like in a relationship, I did stunt, I stunted myself a lot, like a lot in that relationship. So not specifically that, but it kind of all ties in. And do you think that a part of you did it because of how you wanted to appease to him? Not appease, but I would say that because of how, you know, when you like, you have someone and you just want them to be proud of you. It's kind of like your parents or whoever you may look up to, you want them to be proud of you. So not a tease, but I felt like, okay, I want to also do these great things that this person is doing and I want him to see me in this light. So is that something that would, I guess impressed? Cause I feel like when I'm in a relationship, yeah, I do actually want that validation from my partner because it's my lifelong partner. And I feel like I got my own head. And maybe he would not have even cared. Who knows? We wouldn't know now, but yeah. <laughs> what was his like professional, like what you said he was doing something and he probably wouldn't see value in what you were doing. So what were he, what was he doing? So he was, he was a truck, he was a trucker, but he was getting into like real estate. So he had owned several properties and he was just like building up his portfolio and just like, he was in a very structured kind of realm where I felt like I wanted to be in more of a creative kind of realm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Those things can't coexist? I think they can, but I feel like at the age and where like we were, I didn't feel like they kind of, I didn't feel comfortable enough for, there was something within that relationship that I felt like was making me feel like I had to hold that part of myself back. So now that they couldn't, but for some reason during that time, I felt like it wasn't good enough. Right. So my last question before I, I share my experience, if you could go back or if you could talk to someone who is actually feeling the same way you felt back then, what is like one strategy or like suggestion that you would give them on how to just share their thoughts and their feelings about, hey, I'm, I'm creative and I'm feeling a little insecure that 
maybe you won't see value in that like how would you suggest someone go about a conversation in their relationship um for me how would they go about the i feel like before even the conversation is kind of get an idea of like why you were feeling this way because if i could go back i would ask myself like is it really this person that's making me feel this way and if it is really this person why am i here like why am i allowing myself to be in a situation that i feel like i cannot grow and move upwards or is it really an insecurity that i'm having for myself that i need to work out and then if I feel like that's the, that's like the conclusion, I would have to come to him and present it in a way where it's just like, I don't know why I feel this way, but this is how I'm feeling. And I would love your assistance in helping me work through this. Like, what are your thoughts? Not really, I don't think I would really ask the person their opinion, like as far as like the thing that I'm doing, but I would ask for encouragement on how to get there because their opinion on what my creative endeavors shouldn't be negative. So if I come from a perspective where like, he's going to encourage me anyways, the thought process would be, okay, I'm coming to you because I'm feeling insecure and I want to know how can you help me get to here? So that's how I approach it. For me, like my firsthand experience with self-discovery or self-development in my relationship is honestly, that's how I've been like, I've always been like, go, go, go. I, actually, me and my husband had a conversation the other day where he was like, well, once you graduate, I just know you're about to pull something out the hat again. Like, it's about to be another thing. And he didn't say it in a disparaging way because we actually both laughed. And I actually had um, been talking to my therapist about um, kind of not creating more of a balance, but noticing that I can, I can, um, my plate is full and identifying when my plate is full and identifying um, what to keep on my plate. And so for me, I'm like the go-getter. Um, and I'm not even just gonna say my marriage, but like a, a lot of people in my family don't relate to like how I go after things or like, it's like, oh, I wanna do this up oh, tomorrow I'm doing it. Or I, oh, here's how I do it, broke it down. Like even I had a um, sidebar caveat, I had a, a, a meeting with, I don't know if the viewers know, but I have a food company. It's on hold now because I went through the whole trademark process which takes over a year but um i have a food company and i went and got um i guess like consulting from a food innovative department and throughout that meeting she told me everything i already knew like she was like okay this is what you do this is what you do and i was at toha i was like you know the crazy thing is you you've given me out of seven suggestions only two i didn't know and it was like actual actual personal references and so being a person that ha is a go-getter or has a lot of goals and is always in like that self-discovery, I guess, rat race, so to speak, um, we, we expect our partners to be maybe show up like that. It's like, oh, like you realize you're doing this and you're going and you're getting after what you want, but then your partner may not also be going after certain goals. So at this stage in my life, I'm at a place where I'm trying to support my husband and his self-discovery and what that looks like, like the dance between me having what I need for me in terms of um, what self-discovery looks like for me. So for me, self-discovery is about like emotional well-being. I'm in therapy, um, career or entrepreneurial, you know, goals, passion projects, I like to call it. Those are two areas that I like to grow in and I'm always find new things in and then like my husband he just started like his self-discovery which starts with fitness and on my youtube channel we talked he has like a long-term chronic condition which is multiple sclerosis and it can affect like he can it could be debilitating where he could end up in a wheelchair at any point um he cannot walk at any point but thankfully that's not our situation at this time so he's taking like his fitness to a next level so Sometimes, like, in his journey, I notice, like, I'm looking for ways, how do I support him? How do I encourage him? So I'm always, like, you know, trying to find ways to still exist with my things, which is a lot. Like, it takes a lot of time. Like, being in college, that's a lot of, that's a lot of time. You know, my, my actual full-time job, that's a lot of time. And then helping him. So I don't know if I found, like, that full dance between how it exists in a loving relationship but I know that it should exist. And I think that 
some people, it, it may be even a deal breaker if it doesn't exist. If someone says like, oh, I don't even see you having goals, um, I might want to leave, you know? And I think if you got to that point, like, do you think like not having self-discovery as a priority, do you think that is a deal breaker in a relationship? For me, yes. I think it can be for a lot of people, but I also feel like like I'm, I'm looking at it from an angle is there's a personal relationship and their partner doesn't have goals but they are very much committed to the relationship and like their idea of success is like marriage kids some women that's all they want to do so i feel like sometimes they don't have the next like big thing which is okay i don't think there's nothing wrong with it so there are people who are just like serving like they they really just show up as that so I could see if someone is in a relationship with someone who is the, the, I guess the, their duty is specifically that, and that was the arrangement and that's how it has always been. And for them to switch that, how it can possibly negatively or positively impact the relationship. But I think that, that it, there is a possibility of that, you know, negatively impacting a relationship. If you've always showed up as one way, this is what you've been doing. This is what we agreed upon. And now it's something different. But for me personally, I feel like it's important. Mm -hmm. Why? Like, why is it important? Because like you said, like if the woman, and we obviously speak from a woman's point of view, um, if she thinks that my mission is to, you know, be the support, uh, be the stay at home wife, let's just categorize it as a woman who wants to be a stay at home wife. Do you think that um, there should be more of an emphasis on being a stay at home wife is maybe like a job, but you still are a person like you still have to nurture that human um, being? Oh, when I said it's important, it's important for my partner to have that as a man. Like, that's what I was referring to. So I think, yes, I think, like, um, I don't know if necessarily personal. I feel like everyone should be growing in some sort of way or some sort of fashion. But I feel like for me and my relationship, it's definitely important for a man to have that mindset. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for me personally, especially with my journey, my specific journey and things that I know that I want to do, it's important for me personally to really like invest in that and move forward but for other people in their situations i know women who all they think sleep breathe eat is their man and their kids and i feel like that's completely fine and i can't say that they're not developing in other ways but when it comes to maybe creative endeavors or entrepreneurial endeavors that's not at the top of their to-do list and I think that that's okay if they are contributing to a healthy environment, they're healthy, their partner's healthy. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Mm. Amara, what's your take on that? Oh, for me, it, it is a problem. I, I don't, I, for, I think that I live my life wanting to be free. <laughs> so I need to know who I am to do that. And I think that's in all aspects of my life, whether that be relationship, whether that be career, whether that be um, creative endeavors. Like I need to, we're, we talking about self-development. I'm sorry. <laughs> self -development. Yeah, personal, de personal development. Okay. Yeah. So I need to um, know who I am and the things that move me and the things that, you know, add purpose to my life. And I think because that is my mindset, I couldn't be with someone who don't have that outlook on life. Now, I'm not saying that that means that that person doesn't have um, self-development within them or they're not working on developing, but they have already set the tone for what they want to develop. Some people just want to be at home not doing anything, and that's fine, as long as they're aware of that's what they want to do. And I think the reason why it is important, because if you know that, if you know fully what you want to do within your, within self-development, within life in general, the things that move you, um, I think when it comes to dating other people, you already know where you stand. So it's easier for you to, I guess, decide whether, I, I hope I'm making sense. You are, you are. So it, it brings well, me to, so, okay. How do you, you, you find, okay, let's say someone right now, they found themselves, they are passionate. They know what, 
they know their routines. They know like they like to wake up at 5 a.m. They know they like to go cross country skiing. They know they like to do Pilates. They know that these are important. And well, actually, I'm gonna continue and then I'm gonna say this one thing. But in terms, because I keep hearing you guys say, if a woman just wants to be like, you know, doesn't have as much um, outward facing goal. So they don't have like that career trajectory. Um, they may be just happy, you know, being that partner and spouse and support. So my thing is how does maybe the guy who, who obviously in this situation could possibly be leading in terms of he has the front facing career. He has more of those little, maybe personal self-development goals, like body weight, um, you know, um, money, those things how does he encourage his spouse? So how would a guy, if, if, if he's watching this, encourage his stay at home life? And we're just using these things to help, you know, everyone understand where we're going with the conversation, but how could this career um, driven male help his stay at home wife who has agreed to be the support system, start to um, encourage her to find new passions, and although their relationship may be fine, like you said, the dynamic may be something they agreed upon and they're fine, but how does he, if he looked at himself while he worked out and said, dang, my wife, is, I don't think she's fulfilled. I think I see more for her. How can he have that conversation, motivate her or bring that to her attention? Like, do, do you have any suggestions on that? Because I'm sure someone's going through that. I'm sure someone's saying right now, like, yeah, I'm really career driven because at one point I felt like that. I felt like I was very and I keep saying that my self-development is like more so related to my career and my passions. But like I remember my, my husband being on autopilot for a long while. And then, you know, through certain conversations or just taking more control of his life, he started to have that self-discovery journey, which I'm a big champion of. But what if he never had that? what could I say to him? Or what could he say to me if if the roles were flipped? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes yes. sense. I, do you think like, um, just to take you out of it, but in a situation where someone is um, career and goal, like in this situation, does the person have goals and aspirations, but they're not working towards them? And you're asking, how can this person motivate them to do so? Or is this person comfortable? Like some people just like a simple life. I know a lot of Caribbean people that just want to be able to live on the island, live off the island, and they just, they're okay, like like actually okay with being, like living a simple life. Like, are you asking, how do you then mold that person to want something that they don't want? Like I'm trying to, well, then I the person that we are encouraging? No, I, uh, I think at any point you, you won't know until you have the conversation what it is, right? Like, okay, you might think he, that person might just want this whole life, but like, I guess I don't want to get, I think but I, the person doesn't know it yet. Like the person is just seeing the person being comfortable, but kind of wants to like get an idea of like, okay, what's the next step? I think that's natural for any human being, being around anyone, whether it's like a parent, a sibling, a partner, anyone. Um, I would say just ask the question. Well, yeah, I, that, that's what I'm like. I would just ask. I'm like something sensitive that you would have to like approach it sensitively, or because I'm thinking in my head, I was like, I would just ask the question. I would just ask, like, you know, I'm planning out my goals for the next three months. Like, is there something that you may need assistance with? Is there something that's on your mind that? you want to work on, like, is, is there something that, you know, I would try to put it in a way where, how can I assist you to kind of like bring that information out of the person? Cause I think that that can be sensitive for someone who may actually be comfortable, I don't know. So it's just like, how can I involve myself or what, how can I be a resource to something that you may want to have going on, I right. guess. Yeah, that's a good landing space, it's like, I'm not gonna say you don't have goals and I'm not gonna assume you do, but like, <laughs> hey, so let's get this cow. Yeah, that's good. But I, okay. I do wanna say in, in the midst of that though, it is important. I think I've talked uh, talked about this before, but it is important to not project our potential, well, their potential, uh, because we do tend to get, in, well, not us, but humans tend to get into relationships sometimes and project potential onto uh, their partners. And we see what our partner is giving us. We see 
that our partner has set the tone for their life. And sometimes we just want to be a little delusional and not accept it. So um, in the midst of that, it is important to remember that maybe am I projecting what I see for them? Okay. Mm -hmm. I know you've mentioned this before, and I think I've had this in the back of my head. So um, we all, I think it's one thing to have a superhero complex where you think you can save someone. And then I also think like the premise of a relationship is to nurture and to grow yourself and one another. So I know you say like, don't project pot potential, but isn't that the, the premise of a relationship? Like I see so much in you and I'm not gonna kill myself to make it come out of you, but isn't that like, what is the, the relationship? Like I see, so when I met you, Amara, I was like, oh, this girl is stylish. I see, her, I see we could be friends. I projected that. I don't know this lady from a hole <laughs> or a desk in a chair. Like I didn't know her, and um, but I I saw like I I only saw the outward facing thing. That's why we have attractions, right? So the outward facing thing is like, oh, she, she got style. We we finna be friends, mm -hmm. and um, and I know that's kind of maybe like a shallow type of like example, but I think it, it's still the same thing. It goes to the point. Yeah. The only way you can like kind of in order to grow, like you gotta start there. Like, oh, I see this in them, I see that. I think you are saying that at a certain point, you maybe are beating a dead horse. Is that what you're saying? Or are you saying you never project? If they don't ever show it, we never explore it. Like, are you Oh saying no, that well, that would definitely be be a lie if I say we never project. No. But I mean, as far as um I, I believe in habits, I believe in daily habits. If this person has daily habits, they do the same exact thing. That is literally them setting the tone. There may be, you may um, start off dating a certain way and, and within the relationship, you think that your partner don't have goals or self-development or whatever you will. And slowly but surely you see, well, hey, he started going to the gym. Hey, he, he's listening to um, uplifting podcasts. Hey, you know, you start seeing little things here and there. The habits are changing. But when you don't see a change in the habits at all, I personally believe that if I'm over here telling myself, I see the potential, I'm delusional. Where is the potential? They literally showed their daily habits. They are not developing. So for me, that's why I'm like, don't project. Right. Okay. Um, and I think, um, I think my last... Thing I wanted to explore is like when you get in relationships you change so let's not worry about the guy but let's worry about us now you're in this relationship and now that creative entrepreneurial front-facing you know person who is going 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 has slowed down and she does not recognize herself because maybe her routine stopped maybe that 5 a.m five mile run is not happening anymore. Maybe that 2 p.m. facial every other Thursday is no longer. What does she do in order to redeem herself? Because you can't be the best in your relationship if the things that truly are in the inside of you that really fuel you, you stop doing, right? So how does she recognize that? Or how does she get back on her, um, in her flow while still like not hindering her relationship one that she's committed in one that she wants you know how does she say well whoa like actually i've changed and i need to get back to this how does she create space for herself mm. i think self-discovery is the first thing and well, start with like does it start with like faith does it start with girl talk does it start with therapy does it start with like maybe you taking a break out of relationship like how does she, like how like what's the step what's the overarching thing i think it starts i'm putting myself in it but i think that i personally would start with um finding the things that i used to love about myself and um what led me to doing whatever it was that i loved about myself and find the reasons why i no longer do those things and um create some type of system where I'm able to get back into doing those things. And if I feel like in the process, I may be self-sabotaging, add to the list. Maybe I do need a therapist to help me um, 
continue this development journey or maybe I do need social activity to help me with this development journey. But I think all in all, it does start with the self-discovery. And that's why it is important to, you know, know who you are. Because some people, life just hit them and they're like, I don't understand why. And then there's other people where life hit them and it's like, I know exactly why. So mm -hmm. I think that's important. Yeah, that's yeah I think... Um... Like to add on to what Amara said, I think shaking up your environment or your routine is like extremely important to kind of like get like creative ideas or that kind of spark. I know for myself, like one of the reasons why I had decided to move to Texas and the pandemic ruined everything, but one of the reasons why I had decided to move to Texas because I felt like I needed something different. I felt like in New York City, it's just concrete, tall buildings, which is beautiful. I love my city, but it's just like, it got so repetitive and redundant and draining that when I moved and took myself out of like this concrete stifling environment, like I feel like one, I connected with nature more. Like that's one of the main reasons why I would love to go back to Texas babe one day but <laughs> i'm like it's really beautiful and i feel like more connected like just like mentally spiritually i feel like light and like uplifted and then you know the pandemic happened but you know i think shifting your environment and routines is like maybe one of the best ways to spark creative ideas or to spark something new within you because when you're in a routine it's very hard to get out of routine and i'm speaking of this because it is hard for me to wake up at 5 a.m. and go to the gym, even though I want to, okay? <laughs> but you just got to take it a step at a time. And then when you mm -hmm. go, it's like, oh, I found this coffee shop that I actually like. And I like going there after. So now this is more of an incentive to go there. Or maybe I went to the gym and ran into a female girl, like a, a girl, so a female girl. Crazy times <laughs> living <laughs> Crazy times we're living in, excuse me. So maybe I went into a woman, ran into a woman who's looking for an accountability partner and that is now a new motivation to do. You just never know. And I think mm -hmm. just shaking things up a bit can be very like uplifting and like, just like spark new things. So that's the only other thing that I would add to what Amara said. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the caveat to all of this is there is someone who might hear us and might say, baby, I'm in a dark hole. This sounds good, but I can't get out of it. So one, definitely mental health. Um, you know, you, you start with that. There are resources. So if anyone is, if this conversation sparks something where you feel like, oh yeah, that's me. I actually need to get back doing the things that I love. I wish that for you, you know? Um, I would also say like faith what what where your faith is because that kind of gives you the understanding of your purpose for me I, for everyone but for me my faith lets me know why i'm here so when i'm losing sight of it because the the worldly things are you know kind of coming at me i know that god sent me here for a reason to fulfill a purpose and i think staying connected to my faith connects me to like okay i, I i'm accountable to god before i'm accountable to a friend before I'm accountable to myself, I'm accountable to God. So that, but you know, if anyone is in like a dark hole and they want to get that spark going, we do encourage it. We we still we send you energy to get that going because um, um and Desha, you did start off the episode where you said um like in your relationship before, you know, you were like 28 wanting to do YouTube, and now a few years later. You are your age still wanting to do YouTube. So sometimes it never changes. Like, and you gotta like kind of own it, you know? So I, I, and I also hope that whoever is listening, man, you know, male or a woman or female, that you understand that um, supporting people, like even this show is happening because we all have that one thing that we, that one spark that we're able to, you know, stick together with. And I think finding maybe a supportive group um, can help, you know, your goals. I, I know that self-discovery, you think that is something maybe that you should do in your youth, your adolescence, but no, it's a lifelong commitment, you know? And um, so whether you are 69 or 72 or 54 or, or 15, self-discovery is always going to optimize who you are as a person so that when your last day here, you don't have to say shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know? Um, and that's all we can hope for, to just be our best selves, bring our best selves. And while we in love doing that dance, we could do the dance with ourselves 
and you know and, and keep that flow with them so this was i think a really I love that. yes you know <laughs> um, this is this is a good and i thank you both for sharing you know a little bit personal experiences suggestions strategies and i just want to say to the viewers we are active on social media so if you could screenshot so let's give a good face so they can screenshot <laughs> So, at this episode, share with a friend. We are really in the business of growing this platform, and we're not going to be uh, ashamed to tell you that. So, please tell a friend and tell a friend that when culture calls is here to stay. Okay, and um, we would love to get your perspectives, any suggestions, any tools, or any resources. If you know a platform that's heavy on self development, share it in the comments. Um, we will be back for another episode soon. So, bye. Bye. Bye.